This world has seen the very worst of us Sometimes I think her tears might never end With all the hunger, poverty and pain Some people say this world is at an end But I will try to listen to my heart No matter what they think what they say I won't be afraid to do my part and help the sun to shine for one more day so I keep walking on with a vision and this song as the goodness in this world drifts out of sight but I keep my smile everything will be alright once my lucky ladybug takes flight Once my lucky ladybug takes flight It made me happy to see children of today taking such a interest to what's going on in the world. I think it's a wonderful thing that she's done. So I kinda, I'd like to keep one of these and continue to do your good work, okay? We're uh, coming from a Christmas manicure. We just had lots of fun together. And we were in the car, and we were driving down a back lane. And um, she was admiring her sparkling nails. We were singing Christmas carols. And uh, we were sort of at the end of the lane, five feet away from us as we were driving, was a man eating out of a garbage can. And he was voraciously eating and it was something that you couldn't miss because it was right there. I was literally driving in his direction. And we both stopped singing and we both looked at him and he looked up at us and he went right back. And Hannah said, Mommy, what is he doing? Why? Why is he doing it? I didn't know that there was homeless people. So I was really shocked and said that there's something not right here. I, I thought everyone should have a home. And it was horrible, it was horrible to see. And I didn't know what to say. And it was something that I never thought I would share with a child that was five. And so I, I couldn't think of anything profound to say. And so I just said, you know, Hannah, he's down on his luck. He has nowhere to live and, and nowhere to eat. And he does that because he's hungry and he has to. I thought of that man almost every night. I worried about him almost for a year. And then I finally just had to do something about it. I just couldn't s stop. I just had to stop being sad. We tried to sort of, you know, have it not be something that she would worry about. And then when she started at her school, uh, there was a lady that uh, was right outside the gates of her school. And it was sort of in a poor part of the city. And. Uh, you know, everything she had pretty much was in this grocery cart and she was there a lot panhandling. She said, Mommy, I know you can't stop when I'm with you, but can you give her some money? Can you do something for her? And she would ask a lot. And so it seemed after, you know, now that this woman was outside the school gates, that this was something that she was going to be reminded of again. And then finally one night when she went to go to bed, I just said to her, you know, Hannah, sometimes when you worry about something, if you think of a little something that you can do to help it, maybe you won't worry so much anymore. And it was like a light, light went on for her. She went to bed and a couple of days later, she had, she said, Mommy, I know what I'm gonna do. Hannah came to me one day and, and said, Mrs. Hildebrand, I, could we have a lunch meeting? I, there's something very important I wanna talk to you about. We went to the teacher's lounge. I um, talked to m my teachers she had grandiose ideas of, of raising money and building a, a shelter. They said it was great, absolutely wonderful. We do have shelters around the city that, that care, care for the homeless, and could we do something to perhaps help the ones that are already there? They gave me some of their ideas, and it turned into one humongous big idea. We um, collected baby food jars full of money. We, we solicited the, the students and the parents and the staff to uh, 
contribute money and clothes and uh, blankets and uh, um, cans of coffee because they, the homeless shelters have like 3,000 cups of coffee that they serve each day so we thought we could help in that way and uh, gathered up all this stuff to, uh, to give to, um, to the homeless mission and uh, um, that was the, the start of it. Anna had, had gone around the city with her dad and, and found a homeless shelter that she, she thought would be a, a, a good place to um, contribute to. I invited them to come down to, to meet us and to see the mission firsthand. So as a result, that night, uh, Hannah's dad, Bruce, uh, brought Hannah down and that was our initial meeting. Now this area that we have right here, this is where everybody eats. 56 people can eat here. And when it's really cold out, or when the when I left, I was so encouraged that I could help. For some reason, it's just ah, I can help. Yeah. Have you seen the kitchen before? I actually started to cry. I mean, I don't know why, but I started to cry. For some reason, happy tears that I was actually going to help. The first thing that that happened was, uh, I I I guess I offered. I said, you know, I'll come to your school and speak to your class if you would like. And so they arranged that I could come and do that. And then Hannah sprung this fundraising program on her class. She says, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. She's got it all organized and mapped out. And uh, sure enough, they did it. Hannah's Ladybug Project really has gone past the point of just being about some ladybug jars. And that's a wonderful thing. Um, there's a lot of people now out there who are perhaps seeing homelessness or thinking about, um, you know, problems, social problems, things that, that maybe the day before they weren't. And this has caught their attention and this has um, been a way to, to, to get an effective message. listening to you and they're not going to care if you make a mistake. They're not looking at the page, so it doesn't really matter. You just want to get your message out. She spoke at her sister's school and a few of the girls took jars that were very supportive. And But one of the children that took the jars happens to be um, the editor of the Winnipeg Free Press's uh, stepdaughter. And that's how Gordon Sinclair got, found out about Hannah. I've written this column, uh, this general interest column, for over 20 years. And I've done lots of very inspiring stories and human interest stories about people. Um, this is by far uh, the most inspiring of, all, of them all. It uh, brought me to tears at times. And uh, it, uh, it, it, it truly uh, put a smile on my face. And, and, uh, and it did to me what it does to so many others. It just inspires you. The support for Hannah has been phenomenal, but I don't want Hannah to be a political trophy where to some degree she is, I don't know, exploited because of, of her courage and her passion and her compassion that the people that are now applauding Hannah lose sight of the fact of the people that she's passionate about that are real, broken, wounded people that for the most part politicians wouldn't phone or give very little consideration to. And yet they're the ones that, Pan, uh, that Hannah's really trying to help. I think what it is with Hannah what, is that she, she is the personification of innocence and idealism. And it's, it's what we all maybe were at one time, but time and experience and the world has eroded that. She's going to meet with the mayor 
and it's a very private thing. And when I talked to his assistant, I said, you know, she has lots of questions and lots of things to talk to him about. He needs to listen to her. Whether or not he can do anything, I really need to be sure they want to listen to her. She sees these people as simply people, whereas most of us don't. It's all about the cause. It's not about her. It's not about um, anything else but the homeless. Someone gave me a lady big jar actually on full, and um, I have no idea why, but and I she said really... to me, "You know, Mama, how come someone didn't fill this?" And I said, "You know, Hannah, sometimes there will be people who don't believe in what you believe in, and that's just life." And she said to me. You mean, Mom, there are people that don't believe that we should all care about each other and share a little of what we have? And I had to say, yeah. Oh, it didn't really hurt my feelings. I was just a bit confused. You know, there, there are lots of big hearts out there that are just waiting for a way to, uh, to express themselves and to get involved and help out. And um, some of them will uh, tune in to an eight-year-old child who who has a simple message and who says, you know, and I'm, I can be big enough to speak about it and I can be big enough to talk about it and try to help with it. And, and by the way, if I can, you know, so can you.